Hello, my name is Tom Rogan. I'm the moderator of the McLaughlin Group. And today I have the fortune of being joined by Neil Hare, the President and CEO of Global Vision Communications, and by Adrian Elrod, who is a democratic strategist. And Neil, why don't you talk us through in terms of your, why you're here today uh, and representing Taiwan civil government? Uh, we do represent the Taiwan civil government, which is an educational and advocacy group based in Taiwan. Uh, that supports much closer uh, relationship with the United States. Uh, they're a trusted partner on the ground for economic uh, cooperation and trade, uh, military cooperation, and also on the international stage. And so they've been working for over 10 years to, uh, to foster this stronger relationship. They have over 60,000 members in Taiwan. Um, and it's, it's important to realize that uh, Taiwan is not a recognized country. Mm. The United States doesn't recognize Taiwan. Uh, the G7 or the G20 don't recognize it. The United Nations doesn't recognize Taiwan. Uh, so that what they're trying to do is move towards uh, some international recognition, but really to uh, create a much stronger relationship with the United States that currently exists. And a Adrian, would you say that there is a consistency really in American politics in mm -hmm. terms of support for Taiwan traditionally? Yes, I mean, I think there's a consistency, uh, in, certainly in, in terms of supporting Taiwan. Um, but to your point, we have never, um, the United States has never recognized Taiwan as a country um, for many, many different political reasons. But yes, there is a consistency in foreign policy when it comes to how Taiwan is treated by the United States government. And, and, and Neil, on that point, you know, American politicians might say that the risks of that recognition are too high in terms of China. What would your response be to that? Well, I think, first of all, uh, China, the issue of China and Trump's relationship with China, China is, I think, going to be the defining, really defining relationship mm -hmm. of his presidency. We've been talking about Russia a lot, but mm -hmm. I think when it comes down to it, it's going to be China. So uh, it is, you know, anything we do regarding Taiwan is going to have an impact on the Chinese relationship. Mm -hmm. And the closer we get to Taiwan, I think the uh, angrier China may get. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we recently just uh, passed the Taiwan Travel Act that we can talk about and uh, which facilitates travel between officials of the both countries. China immediately engaged in military exercises, naval exercises in the Straits of Taiwan. And we have seen in recent months increasingly robust Chinese actions in terms of changing passenger uh, flight routes, right. uh, these military exercises. Do you think there there is a deliberate pressure on Taiwan trying to send a message to President Trump? Absolutely. I think they, um, they're they flexing their muscles. China is flexing their muscles with flyovers and the naval mm -hmm. exercises. Um, my favorite recent story is they, uh, China attacked the gap for releasing a t-shirt that had that didn't have Taiwan as part of the map of China right. in there and, and the gap capitulated mm -hmm. understandably but right. we as a country can't be backing down every time China flexes its muscles. And, and Adrian, obviously you're a Democrat, but mm -hmm. you have seen President Trump, uh, recently the White House came out with quite a robust statement condemning what they saw as the co Chinese Communist Party uh, demanding certain elements of speech. I mean, do you think, though, that the administration with the focus on North Korea might be scared to some degree about upsetting Beijing and that that might affect Taiwan policy. Absolutely and I think this is exactly why you have seen you know regardless of being a Democrat or a Republican I think this is why you've seen past presidents be very careful when it comes to how they treat Taiwan right because there is that potential of really angering uh, China. Mm. China considers Taiwan to be a part of its country. Right. The Taiwanese do not consider themselves to be part of China right. so that is where you have this sort of adversarial yep. situation. Right, mm -hmm. and Neil, in terms of the sort of historical context right. here, there is that perhaps compelling argument to make, uh, I would assume from your point, that uh, Taiwan is a democracy, a small nation, uh, standing up to against a, a much larger authoritarian nation, that Americans might find alignment with that moral message. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that they do, but I think it is important to look at the history, if we go back 70 years, that the United States won, uh, we won World War II and mm -hmm. we conquered Japan and Japan was in control of Taiwan at that particular time and there was actually a treaty, that the Treaty of San Francisco in 1952 where we, the, the, the United States took over control of Taiwan at that time and what we did was we put in uh, Chiang Kai-shek as, our, as mm -hmm. our friendly uh, mm -hmm. leader on the ground and he ruled the country for 25 years, but in the 70s, when we started doing uh, opening China, uh, we we passed the the uh, 1979 Taiwan 
uh, Relations Act mm -hmm. and created this one China policy, which is where things have gotten really muddled right. from that right. point on. Right, and, and what would you say in terms of priorities for Taiwan in terms of defense exports from the United States? Uh, well, we, we just, uh, last year, um, Congress passed a $1.4 billion uh, uh, spending, or excuse me, arms package where we sold some planes and uh, missiles and other items to uh, Taiwan. So we're, we're continuing to say we will defend you, and this is back to the, that 79 Act, and we're showing it by, by giving them uh, or selling them weapons, which you know, Taiwan uh, wants and desperately needs. Yeah, and but 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 it it goes beyond that, doesn't it? In terms of what would you say is what is the sale factor to Americans in terms of your argument for a closer Taiwan U.S. relationship? Well, I think I want to put it in the global context and the foreign policy and diplomacy. You know, there's been a lot going on with trade recently and the tariffs mm -hmm. that the ta that President Trump was talking about with. Um, with China and a lot of people, you know, free traders didn't like that. But you have these, all these pieces on the board. You have the North Korea denuclear de 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 nuclear relation talks, yep. which just fell apart today. Um, you have trade with China. Uh, you have the steel and the aluminum imports, and you have to put it all in that 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 context. And the closer we get to Taiwan, the harder things get with China. And Adrian, what do you think would be uh, you know, in the next five years, I mean, could do you think President Trump will stay on this current present approach of trying to maintain good relations with Beijing, but obviously a, a close relationship with Taiwan, or do you see things changing? You know, I, it, it, I think it's too hard to be able to predict at this point. I do think that past presidents have had this challenge, most certainly, given the fact that you just made, which is the closer we get to showing stronger diplomatic relations with ta Taiwan, the more we anger China. Mm -hmm. And our relationship with Beijing, as difficult it is, as it is, it's still very important to maintain a positive relationship with that country for many, many reasons. For, for reasons on trade, for reasons on uh, foreign policy, for national security reasons. We've got to maintain good relations with China. And that's where every past president, I think, has right. become stumped. Yeah. They want to help democratic Taiwan, but at the same time, they don't want to anger Beijing. Neil, why don't you come in there? Yeah, I would, uh, you know, I'd like to see a much more muscular foreign policy from the United States. I think actually uh, President Trump was on the right path by, by the tariffs, even though I'm a free trader. I think he was saying, we're not letting you dump steel into the United States anymore. We're not going to let you keep stealing our intellectual property. Mm -hmm. We're not going to let you r saber rattle and, and scare us. And so I think what a great way to, to further that is, hey, we're going to be more friendly with Taiwan. Let's mm -hmm. send a naval aircraft carrier into, into Taiwan and have a port of call. Let's, let's sell them more arms and let's see what China does. I don't believe um, that, they're, that they're going to stand up to us. And there is a broader context here, mm -hmm. isn't there, in terms of U.S.-China tensions in the South China Sea, mm -hmm. China's militarization of islands there. And so potentially President Trump might come to that viewpoint that in, that in some sense Taiwan as an, a friend of the United States and China behaving increasingly as an adversary, mm -hmm. that actually there might be more of a willingness to take some of those risks, as you suggest. I think so. I mean, nobody wants to see a military engagement with China. I, I don't think anybody wants to no. see that. But I also think the way, that the way China plays the game is unless you stand up and show that you're willing to be aggressive with them, then they're going to take. They're just going to keep taking and taking and taking. Literally, f for 25 years, they've been stealing our intellectual property. We've done nothing about it. Dumping steel, building up their military in an, in an unbelievable way, going into Africa, Middle East, very quietly, buying buying up the United States. They, they own a huge part of our debt and uh, other parts of the United States. And what have we done? And very little. Adrian, why do you think Taiwan has the support that it does on Capitol Hill? Well, first of all, as a former chief of staff on Capitol Hill, I will say that um, the people of Taiwan, Tecro at the time, was the sort of uh, entity that uh, was representing Taiwan on Capitol Hill. I'm not sure if they still are, but they did, did a very good job of, of reaching out. They sponsored trips for chiefs of staff to go to Taiwan so you could truly understand firsthand what that country was facing, what their priorities were, what they wanted out of the United States, which of course was an arms deal and recognition of being a standalone country. Um, but, you know, I, I think, look, Taiwan, to your point, is a de democracy, and they are standing up to big red China. Um, they are fearful every day that something, um, for, for their safety, uh, that China could, could, you know, fire off a missile at them. Right. So I think the United States is trying to 
maintain that balance of supporting a democratic country against the communist re regime, but also knowing that they've got to maintain diplomatic relations mm -hmm. with China. And Let me just jump in there. I mean, it, it, it is a democracy in the sense that they, they have elections, but a lot of those, you know, a lot of countries have elections that aren't necessarily Correct. legitimate. <laughs> right. um, Saddam Hussein used to have elections, yes. and he right. won by 96% of the vote. 98%, right. I think. Yeah, right. there was 98%. Yeah. Um, and it's important to realize that politically there's a lot of folks on in Taiwan who are pro-China. Mm -hmm. they, they have a lot of support, which we don't want that. And that's why, you know, the, the TCG is so important as a, a potential partner because they are very pro-U.S. They don't, they don't make any bones about that. They don't hide that. They want a much closer relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think we just have to be careful to recognize that there's a, there is a boat pro-China faction in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And China's in there. They're doing the same thing, buying up companies, taking uh, a lot of the young workers and giving them better deals in, in, Taiwan, in uh, China, excuse me, and exerting their influence and uh, in you know, information messaging of exactly. the time many Americans will be right and you know th these days you don't have to do it militarily anymore you can buy companies you can do it on social media you can you know you take the uh, workers the cap the human capital and you, you take them to your country and all of a sudden you've taken over and you didn't have to fire uh, one bullet. Neil, let me ask you something I, I asked yeah. Adrian earlier. How do you see President Trump's relationship with China in relation to the North Korea uh, process affecting Taiwan? Well, I think he almost bet his whole presidency on this uh, North Korea deal. I mean, he, he, he did, I think, declare victory a little bit early just on getting the meeting, not on, I'm not saying what would come out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a little, uh, you know, uh, mission accomplished uh, kind of thing. And he's got to get it done. And I don't think he can get it done without China. China, I mean, North Korea is a proxy state for China. That's the only partner, the only friend that they have left. Yep. And if he doesn't get something done, something that he can say uh, he got done with North Korea, which everybody wants, by the way. We all would love to see sure. no more nukes on the Korean p Peninsula. But if he doesn't get that done, it's going to be real tough for him uh, uh, when a real election comes around. But isn't there an argument then some people would say, well, you need to be closer to Beijing to get that done? Um, you can, but again, I think the way they think in, in China and President Xi thinks is you have to be tough. Right. You, you can't capitulate or he, you're going to get nothing out so of it. So you actually think potentially the way to get that deal is to actually be tougher on China to say we'll impose costs rather than give benefits? I, I think so. I think so, 100 percent. Adrian, if we look at Taiwan in terms of the sort of, you know, obviously an export market, high tax sector mm -hmm. there, do you think there is a prospect going forward? Does the U.S. economy, obviously politicians on all sides are trying to focus on a more s the STEM process as we talk about so much, an acronym. Um, do you think there is an opportunity there in terms of possibly, you know, a dramatically increased trade? Sure. No, I mean, I think that's one of the great benefits that Taiwan has going for it, right, is their, um, is their, uh, their tech sector. Um, and I think, obviously, that's a you know, that's a win-win for the United States and for t Taiwan. But again, to your point, there are so many other factors withstanding our relationship with Taiwan that come into play here. The North Korea talks, the need for China to be on board with the, to ensuring that those talks get reinstated, um, you know, that they don't end with what happened today. So I think there's a lot mm. to be seen. Mm. And, and Neil, you know, $65 billion in two-way right. trade. Obviously, a lot of Taiwan, you know, cell phones. We all love our sort of smart right. cell phones. That's, that's a, actually, a, you know, a, what would you say on that, actually? Yeah, well, I, uh, I do. I love that stat that uh, 36 Taiwanese companies contributed to the manufacturing of the, uh, the iPhone 8, right. which is not bad. I mean, let's remember, Taiwan, they only have 25 million people in the country. Right. It's a small island nation. Yet it's the 11th largest economy in the world. Uh, it's our ninth largest trading partner and seventh in, in terms of agricultural trade. They're a powerhouse in aviation, electronics, chemical, manufacturing, energy. Um, so it's a huge economy and a huge partner. And I think that is that is another opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's, let's get a free trade agreement together with Taiwan mm -hmm. and let's ramp those numbers mm -hmm. up. I mean, they, they would like it. The TCG is... Uh, very hev heavily focused on business and the economy and trade. And that'd be another way to show China, hey, you know, let's ramp up our uh, trade with, with Taiwan. What would need to happen to see that, you know, taking place in the next couple of years? Well, I think we could look at a free trade agreement. I mean, we, you know, we backed out of TPP, I yeah. guess, but mm -hmm. maybe we may be going back in. I don't know. But and President Trump has said that he wants right. individual agreements, so that might align. 
Right, exactly. So let's do a bilateral agreement. Let's let's open trade up further. Um, let's facilitate it. Let's, you know, maybe add a whole new uh, visa mm -hmm. structure to allow Taiwan business to be more easily. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and and let's just move forward. I think you've got to show that. So what would be yeah. your sort of articulation of the bumper sticker or slightly bigger bumper sticker uh, <laughs> argument for Taiwan civil government in terms of priorities? Well, I would say. Uh, closer ties with the United States. I, they, the Taiwan civil government would love to see uh, an immigration facilitation. Mm -hmm. Let, let's go one step further than the Taiwan Travel Act um, and allow um, some other heightened level of ability to immigrate into the United States or come back and forth and right. do business. I think that would be the huge win for, for TCG. And, and Adrian, as someone who has visited Taiwan, mm -hmm. what would you say is the bumper sticker for Americans in terms of the evolving relationship? Well, I actually think, I, I, I personally enjoy just visiting the country itself. Um, there's a beautiful national park that we travel to. Um, Taipei is a fascinating city in itself. Um, but I think to your point, in, in you know, broader speaking terms, uh, free trade, uh, some sort of like extended visa waiver program, uh, and obviously a continuing relationship where we can sell arms to okay. Taiwan. Well, Neil and Adrian, I think that we've got through a, a number of issues there. Thank you very much for joining us in this segment. And uh, Adrian, we appreciate it as well in terms of Thank someone you. who's visited. Yes, Thank, Thank you, you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank well, it was you. terrific. Great.